Hello everyone, my name is Amanda Botsford and the title of my project is Passing on the Grit, Women's Stories of Stewardship. Pictured on the title page are eight wonderful women that I had the pleasure of getting to know during the course of my project, each with a unique story to share about their experiences on rangelands across the West. Take a few moments to think about a woman in your life that is important to you. What qualities and characteristics does she embody? Was she strong, intelligent, brave, compassionate, a problem solver, curious, dependable? Keep this in mind throughout my presentation. For me, I think of these two women. My mom pictured on the left and Adrian Galvin pictured center and right. Both of these women I look up to. They are both role models and lifelong mentors. They are the root of my project. Adrian is like my grandmother, as my mom's mom and I never met. She passed away when my mom was my age, 33, and Adrian became like a mom to my mom, teaching her everything she knew about barrel racing, roping cattle, breaking a horse, fixing fence. Adrian operated the Galvin Ranch with her late husband, Ben Galvin. As a child, my mom would take me to the ranch where I would explore the rolling hills, ride the oak-laden trails, climb the hay barrels in the barn, muck out stalls and pastures. Most importantly, I developed a love of the land, of agriculture, learning alongside Adrian what it means to steward the land. Today, she still lives on the ranch and has placed the property into a land trust for when she's gone. She's 89 years old. So, why women? Why ranching? What gap does my project fill? I want to document a woman's experience on rangelands so that an oral record exists. There is a limited body of research on a woman's experience, specifically on rangelands. Five peer-reviewed articles, actually. I want to do this to encourage dialogue between both men and women ranchers to foster the sharing of knowledge. Lastly, I hope to elevate a woman's voice to inspire other young women to pursue ranching as a business. This is a snapshot of a Google image search for ranching. As you can see, the images that pop up are mostly white men. Where are the women? In the US, 14% of all ranch operations are solely operated by a woman. 30% have at least one female operator on the ranch. Taking in all of that background, this leads me to my project and the questions I sought to answer. How can a woman's experience on rangelands A. Challenge the dominant narrative, in this case, white males owning and operating ranches. 2. Inform our stewardship practices. And 3. Empower young women to pursue agriculture through personal storytelling. To explore these questions, I had the pleasure of interviewing 8 women in a semi-structured one-on-one -on -one personal interview. I used qualitative analysis and coding through a social science platform called Deduce. These women live in California, the San Luis Valley, Montana, the western slope of Colorado, and Gunnison. Now the fun part. What did I do with all this data? I started by transcribing each of the interviews by hand. Then I brainstormed themes that I thought were relevant to my research question, and then I felt connected to the language the women used in our conversations. They are listed here. Once I had my themes, I uploaded the transcribed documents, the data, into the social science platform I noted earlier, Deduce. This program helps me take those themes, or codes as they are called in the program, and pair passages from the transcripts with the themes. Each theme I defined myself. I went through each transcript multiple times and applied words and sentences the women spoke of to these themes. The algorithm within Deduce creates many interpretations of the information. For example, let's take the theme, Novelty. My definition for novelty is that there is an undercurrent of gender in the experience a woman is sharing in our conversation. For example, someone said, You see more and more women you know out working side by side with men, and I think mainly it's just because women are just becoming a bit more bold in every profession. Just saying I'm not going to sit at the house and bear children and cook your dinner. I'm going to go out there and work and get my hands dirty. Novelty is an undercurrent of gender and language, subconscious or consciously expressed. I applied different themes to dialogue within each interview to get something like this. This chart on the left categorizes the number of passages under each theme per woman. I have kept the interviewee names confidential for this presentation. 
The chart on the right is a co-occurrence chart that tells me which two themes were most popular side by side. For example, in the chart on the left, you can see that one individual talked about empowerment in her language 12 times throughout her interview, highlighted in red here. In the chart on the right, I found when women talked about responsibility, they also talked about stewardship in their language. In fact, half of generational ranchers and half of first generation ranchers shared stories with these underlying themes. Second, empowerment and novelty. Here, 75% of generational ranchers talked about empowerment and novelty over 25% of new ranchers. With mentorship and novelty, all generational ranchers talked with language embodying mentorship. Lastly, when women talked with descriptive language, they also talked about stewardship, a 50-50 split between generational and non-generational ranchers. From this information, I was able to deduce that first, generational ranchers and first generation ranchers spoke of stewardship and responsibility to the land equally. Second, generational ranchers spoke about mentorship and empowerment of women most frequently. Third, all women displayed novelty, gendered language, in their stories. Lastly, interviews suggest that women attend many jobs on a given operation. Women expressed autonomy with chores on the ranch. All tasks on the ranch were possible in the eyes of the women, but they could choose what they could and would do versus male counterparts, which had an expectation to be able to do all ranch tasks absent of choice. So what did I learn? How does this speak to my original research questions? Well, I learned that just by having these women show up every day on the ranch and for these interviews, they are challenging the dominant narrative with their words, actions, and presence. Second, they are informing our stewardship practices every day. I learned that stewardship and responsibility are deeply important to all women ranchers, old and new. Land managers should take this into account when making decisions that they have an invested population in the land, an invaluable social capital resource. Lastly, these women are empowering the next generation of women ranchers. There is a vast resource in all our ranchers, but given the research, our generational ranchers express deep willingness around mentoring and empowering other women in this industry. Those who have worked the land for generations displayed a language of teaching and encouraging others. Let's harness this knowledge and willingness to teach. Mid-May, I'm very excited to share these stories with the community. First, because of the virus, I will now be hosting an online workshop with one of the lady ranchers I interviewed. We've invited local 4-H chapters of the Western Slope to join us in dialogue about the future of ranching and share stories, tips, support among fellow women in agriculture. Second, there will be a small window exhibit with photographs of each of the women I talked with paired with quotations from our conversations. All women authorized use of their photos and I'm very excited for the community to celebrate with them. I'd like to share a couple excerpts from the women I talked with. Robbie L. says, You're strong. You don't have to stand for being pushed around, but you are always, you know, looking for that opportunity. You have to be strong, and you have to be able to laugh, and you have to be able to stand your ground, and it's a balance, and you will have an ally. Strong women lift up, learn from, and help other strong women. Sandy G. says, You have to approach this as a business. Pam H. says, the circling back and learning through the years. What days you have to get your hay in the barn? What day do the lambs come? And what day do the bluebirds come back? You know, getting into the rhythm is very satisfying. And for me, it was very healing. It becomes your family. It teaches you to deep care. It becomes this place of beauty. And just like the reward of any commitment is commitment itself. I think that goes back to getting your foot in the door and showing people what you can do. You don't have to accept that there's a wall in front of you, says Judith. Things that are worthwhile aren't easy, and this is really worthwhile, but it's not always easy, Chloe P. Go out there and see life and death every day, Ashlyn O. It's taken me my whole life to learn everything I need to know about operating this ranch. Now I'm 88 years old, and what do I do with all I know? It's funny I can spell my whole life getting good at something, and then towards the end, think about what was it for. What was it for, Adrian says? Well, for this moment, women are taking the reins and stepping into their power on the range. A huge thank you to all the women I was able to talk with. It was an honor. And to Dr. Corey Knapp, my faculty advisor. Thank you to Retta Brueger, my community sponsor. And to my family, so much love. 
and to Adrian, this project is dedicated to you and your ranch pup, Rose, who just last week went to doggy heaven. Thank you.